Buenos tardes, damas el caballeros. I'm Gina Grillo, president of the Advertising Club of New York, and I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. We have had an overwhelming response to today's webinar, and we are so excited for the partnership. We want to personally thank Horacio Gavillon from the Culture of Marketing Council for being our partner here. Also want to recognize Audrey Dichter Glover from our Access Committee for supporting this event and actually bringing this very important market to the forefront of our conversation today. This, um, today's webinar is a collaboration with one of our corporate members, NBC Universal. They see the club as a platform and a community to tap into, and we are most proud of this collaboration. It's my pleasure to introduce Kerry Stimmel, Executive Vice President of Lifestyle and Hispanic at NBC Universal Ad Sales. Hello, everyone. Um, hopefully you can all hear me. Um, first and foremost, I want to say thank you so much to the Ad Club of New York for having me here today. I can't tell you how excited and actually grateful I am to get to be a part of this conversation. I think it's a really important conversation, a very timely one to be having right now. Um, when my team came to me and said, hey, would you be available to talk about Hispanic insights as well as moderate a panel, panel to talk about challenges and opportunities in the Hispanic marketplace? I'm like, oh, yeah, pick me. Well, that's my poker face. Um, but I, I really, really wanted to be here today. I think that now, more than ever at this moment in time, um, challenges and opportunities truly go hand in hand um, with crisis calling for or or actually with crisis screaming for reinvention and transformation. Um, and that will result in real opportunity. Um, in the past couple of months, we have seen extraordinary accelerated transformation. Just last week, our chairman at NBCU, uh, Linda Yaccarino, talked about the fact that transformation is a shared responsibility and that it demands radical transformation at every single level. And we at NBCU can't do it alone. We're one company, nor would we ever want to do it alone. Um, because when everything is, is at stake, we are all truly stakeholders, um, which is why I'm especially excited to be here with such extraordinary leaders in our business today. I think that this is how the best ideas develop. And the greatest change takes place is when we all come together with purpose. Um, there's no industry better. In my opinion, there's no industry better suited to lead this transformation than the marketing community. Marketing has always been a platform to inform public opinion, to change hearts and minds, to amplify cultural moments and movements, as well as to spur economic growth. Um, we need to work together as an entire industry and come together as an entire industry to make sure that we are providing the best viewing experience for consumers and at the same time creating impact for marketers. Um, we can make much more meaningful impact together than we can apart. So again, thank you to the Ad Club for bringing us all together. So I'm going to kick it off a little bit here. Um, before we get to the panel and the really good part um, with some Hispanic insights for all of you, uh, with their scale, influence, in, and impact, engaging the U.S. Hispanic is critical for any marketer looking for growth. I'm pretty sure all marketers are looking for growth. They are 62 million strong and growing. They are representing over half of the U.S. growth in the next five years, accounting for nearly one in five people in the U.S. today. And this audience is expected to grow to 120 million by the year 2060. Hispanics are currently outspending millennials. Uh, they are projected to have $1.9 trillion in buying power by the year 2023. They have a longer lifetime value, 18 more years actually of buying power than non-Hispanics. They are culturally connected I've been having an, a, an acculturation conversation with marketers on and off over the past 10 years. And I think it's really important to note that 83% of Hispanics agree that it's important to maintain their Hispanic culture. This audience is a business imperative for absolutely everyone. Hispanics have been leading, driving actually growth across 
every single category on um, not only are they driving growth, they're driving double digit growth. And that double digit growth exceeds the growth of non-Hispanics in every single one of these categories that you see. Um, we at NBCU set out to prove the spending power. Um, we analyzed Comcast set-top box data with Epsilon credit and debit purchase data to prove the spending power of Sp the Spanish language TV consumer. You heard me right, I'm gonna say it again, to prove the spending power of the Hispanic consumer. And I will say, if you are on the client side of our business and you have gone to your boss and said, we really need to double down, we need to target this consumer, you have most likely been asked to prove it works before you were given the ability to write that check or invest. If you work at an ad agency or are like me and are on the ad sales side and work for a Hispanic network or platform, you've gone to a client and shown the value of the Hispanic consumer, you have most likely been asked to prove it works, to prove it before um, getting agreement to spend at least once. I'm sure you've been asked. I know I've been asked many times and I will say coming from also the general market, I was never asked to prove it um, beforehand, but we are often asked that in, on the Hispanic, in this Hispanic marketplace. And I will say that if marketers don't believe that the Hispanic demographic has the power of the purse, the status quo is not going to change. And that's why we invested here. One of the biggest myths I've encountered is that Hispanics spend less, and it's simply not true. Not only do they not spend less, they spend more than non-Hispanics, in all of these key categories that you see on the, on the screen. They, um, and, and Spanish language TV viewers spend even more than his, the general Hispanic population. The Hispanic uh, market is a crucial demographic for marketers in all industries. I will say um, that, oh, man, this one deserves its own slide. U.S. Hispanics are our future. This is it, this is our future. You must look at this audience uh, holistically um, NBCU has partnered with the ANA and AIM to develop the Cultural Insights Impact Measurement, or referred to as CIM, C-I-I-M, in a new industry-wide metric that proves the importance and the power of representative, culturally relevant advertising. For SIM, we see that consu consumers who perceive your advertising as culturally relevant, that there is impact to all KPIs across the, across the board, as well as purchase decisions. This is, about, is, this is about reaching consumers with better content, content that's personalized and representative. Um, we already know that people make powerful connections with brands that represent them both um, honestly and authentically. We know that. We know that this translates to better KPIs and stronger sales results. We have a responsibility, all of us have a responsibility to tell diverse and inclusive stories. And the good news is that when we do tell diverse and inclusive stories, that there is a positive impact to sales when we do that. Consumers are 2.7 times more likely to invest in brands that they perceive as representing them in a culturally re relevant, having culturally relevant advertising. Now you can go, Blar. <laughs> um, so I will say, while not the only indicator, language is a very important part of culture. And it's important to note that four out of 10 has US Hispanics do not watch English language TV. So if Hispanic media is not a part of the media buy, you are missing a very sizable amount of, a, of an extremely critical consumer. And now this next part is where I'm going to put in, put in my own personal little plug a little bit here and talk about NBCU. But we have recognized that really to reach the Hispanic consumer, we utilize our entire portfolio. And, and over the course of a month, you, we reach 92% of US Hispanics across our entire portfolio with Telemundo and Universo squarely in the center. And in July, we're going to be launching Peacock um, which will um, really give our audiences another outlet to enjoy their favorite content. And I'm really proud to say that we're scheduled to have over 3,000 hours of Spanish language programming. 
we're excited to see what we learn. Um, and some of how we're approaching the Hispanic market marketplace comes from the insight of the Hispanic consumer being a 200 percenter. And 200 percenter is um, a term that we've actually trademarked at Talamundo, but it really speaks to the fact that Hispanics are 100% Hispanic and they are 100% American. And they bob and weave in between these two worlds um, quite handily. Um, Hispanics are very proud of their roots. And at the same time, they're embracing their, the Amer their American culture. They are celebrating Hispanic holidays. They are celebrating American holidays. They are speaking in, in English and they are speaking in Spanish. And this has really um, helped drive um, again, how we target Hispanics both across languages and across genres in our portfolio. And I think, you know, Javier, you know, we have the NFL up there. I think he's going to speak a little bit too in terms of it's not just about football. And when I say football, I mean the football with a U and refer to soccer, but American football as well is, uh, reach, uh, is reaching Hispanic audiences. Um, we, I, I want to pivot a little bit um, and talk a little about the effects of COVID um, and the impact that it has had. It's important to note that U U.S. Hispanics are resilient in times of crisis. To understand the um, impact of COVID on our consumers, we ex executed a series of bi-weekly proprietary surveys. And we set out to learn in a little more about the role that advertisers can play during these very uncertain times. And I will say, as I'm talking to different marketers, this is where everyone is currently leaning into and wanting to learn more. Um, the findings show that action during a public health crisis can tip the needle for, for purchase intent, both now and later. In our study, we found that a vast majority of consumers expect a consistent level of advertising or actually increased brand communication during this time. Um, in other words, marketers or advertisers do not need consumers' permission to advertise throughout times of crisis. They expect it and they actually expect it a little bit more during these times. But there are some caveats with that. Um, consumers expect brand messaging during um, this time to have um, social responsibility. They're, they expect advertisers to use their power for social responsibility initiatives. Um, these expectations were heightened with Hispanics, climbing to over, over three quarters of Hispanics, um, expecting brands to set a good example for society. And they really were looking for definitive, decisive, community-centric actions. Um, they were looking for brands to take action on their own. They were also looking for brands to prioritize giving back over the bottom line. And where there was a key difference in terms of the Hispanic consumer and the non-Hispanic consumer, the general population, is that the general population was satisfied with these decisive actions. They were totally satisfied. Whereas the Hispanic consumer also craved opportunities to get involved themselves. And they looked at brands to be the entry or access points to do just this. Brands who embrace and take initiative with outreach in the Hispanic community will be re rewarded now and later with bottom funnel metrics. Um, it will be, they will reap prolonged future support when they do this. We learned that 67% um, of Hispanics will stop purchasing from brands that do not support their community at times of crisis. That far exceeds the general population number. Um, it is ultimately, ultimately means that these strategies are not only wise investments during this time, but it's really important for brand health as we move forward. So in closing, um, I wanna just wrap this all up and, and give everyone um, some takeaways as well as our panelists some things to think about before we dive into the questions. Um, engaging US Hispanics is critical for, marketer, for any marketer looking for growth. Hispanics are living in two worlds and you have to approach reaching them holistically. 
consumers are demanding and responding to inclusive stories, both in programming and in marketing. The investments we make, investments even like this conversation that we're having today um, and long afterward will have an impact, a very lasting impact. Cultural relevance and inclusivity are not only good for society, but they are good for business. And this is one I really want to punctuate and spend some time on because we've been having this conversation a lot um, most recently. And, and I will say, if cultural relevant, being culturally relevant and inclusive is the right thing for society, and if that's not enough, which I think we all agree that it should be enough, if that's not enough, it, it, it will have a positive impact on a marketer's bottom line. Both creative and context matter. And the investments we make um, or you make today will have a long-term impact on your bottom line down the road. I will close with saying it's more important than ever to talk to Hispanics at this moment in time and to invest in multicultural audiences. So, now the fun part. I'm waiting for my, my fellows to come on board. Um, should I wait? I'll say Isaac, Gonzalo, here they all come. Okay, I think we got every, we have everyone. Um, so I'm gonna jump right into the questions. Okay, everyone can hear me, right? Yes. yes. I hope I did you all semi-proud. <laughs> space. Um, I'm going to jump right into talking about the current climate, which is kind of where I finished in providing my insights. Um, I think we've seen a lot of momentum um, over the past few weeks, given this, this country. And we know that investing in multicultural is critical now more than ever. And I would love to hear um, from a couple of you on how you are seeing the current climate climate impact um, both your planning and your spending. And I'm going to throw this one to Danae for, for the rest of the time. <laughs> from Coca-Cola, um, I would love to, to hear from you. Thank and you. you to introduce yourself to. Thank you. First of all, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Danae Sanguinetti, another multicultural marketing um, director at Coca-Cola North America. Um, and I appreciate being here today. So thank you for having me. So um, that is a very interesting question, Carrie. So as you know, um, and you mentioned, there's been so many things happening right now in our country, not only the pandemic that started a few months back, but then also we have some um, issues going on with our black, black and brown community as well that has impacted us. So um, from the Coca-Cola company perspective, there's been a lot of different um, approach that we have been thinking about how do we communicate, how we spend. So the first thing is like, you know, this is something that has never happened. So we, we had a, the opportunity to learn from the global market and, and we were able to focus in, in areas that um, maybe were not as positive as some advertising agency, but we actually um, decided to spend less in marketing and focus more in our community. And the way that we actually focus in multicultural marketing at Coke is a three-pronged approach. So it's workplace, marketplace, and community. Um, so our main focus was to make sure that our workplace and our employees and our system was taken care of, that they were safe and everything was happening. Uh, then we focus on making sure that we have our, um, that our community and our supplies were there. And then we, we, you know, from the product perspective that we have, the, and then we focus on our community and that's where we make our planning and spend, just hyper-focus locally and being part of the community and supporting them at that time. Oh, very nice. And I think that actually plays into some of the insights that I shared today quite, quite nicely. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you the same question, Gonzalo. So, hey, Kerry, and, and hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me. This is a, a great opportunity. So I would say that since COVID started three months ago, um, and I'm thinking more from the clients we represent from both the planning and an investment perspective, uh, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster. Uh, if we think about what happened the first two weeks when COVID started, everyone freaked out. 
um, most of the advertisers were trying to figure out how long this was going to last, what they had to do, and what to do with that money that they had in their plans for technically Q2. So we went from the craziness of we need to replan everything, we need to move everything to Q3, uh, we want to take options, we want to cancel whatever we have, uh, to then having a better understanding, number one, that COVID was not going to be a two-week situation. It was going to yeah. be much longer. Uh, and we can tell because we've been three months all working from somewhere else than our offices. And that, I think, made all marketers and also the media agencies, as well as uh, you as NBC and many of the other media partners, uh, to rethink about the right thing to do. And... I would say that after two weeks of craziness, we all realized that we had to take really smart decisions and also think about the long-term uh, situation of their business. So again, um, if you ask me now, three months later, where we are, uh, I think we're in a great place because again, number one, we all learn that life continues. The brands need to communicate and you cannot just walk away. Um, yeah. From a multicultural perspective, what I'm seeing is that everyone is realizing that the Hispanic consumer and the African-American consumer are as important, and in some cases even more important, than the non-white Hispanic, pop non -Hispanic white population. So again, we are seeing uh, many clients coming in, uh, which is great, uh, many clients, uh, going up in their investment. It's just, I think, at this stage, a matter of how we do this right and how we do this in the longer term. I think we are seeing the same thing at NBC Universal, where there are many clients coming in at this moment in, in time. There was that initial you know, panic almost. Um, and I certainly, at the beginning, also thought it was, uh, we were looking at a two week proposition and became very clear very quickly that it was not going to be a two-week proposition. Um, so the, the events I would say in the last several weeks have had a significant um, impact on communities of color. And I would love to talk a little bit about how the tone of your messaging or marketing or conversations have changed um, and evolved over this time. And I would love to throw this, first, this next question to you, Javier. Javier, um, I, I don't know what intros were done in the beginning, but Javier is at the NFL and has been invested in our space for a very long time. But if you could um, speak to that, I'd love to hear. Yeah, so um, thank you for, for that. Um, Javier Farfan, I'm um, their um, NFL's cultural marketing um, strategist. Um, and in regards to messaging, yeah, messaging has definitely changed. I mean, the world has changed, right? And multiple levels. It started with COVID and then um, now with social justice. Um, and I think it would be, it would, and, and I think everybody's seeing it from an advertising community. Um, you know, you see all the advertising and messaging all about COVID and now you're starting to see, um, I guess, the, the, the money and, and the conversations around um, social justice and even pride um, now that we're in June. So I think um, brands and specifically the NFL is taking that very seriously. And I think what I found very impressive of what I saw in the NFL recently is we really took time to listen. Like, you know, we, we actually stopped and said, let's, the leadership at the NFL and from a marketing perspective, really said, let, let's, let's understand what's going on before we react. Um, and had conversations, not just within the marketing organization, but across the organizations from players to executives, to the people that do the work day to day and said, you know, how is, how is it impacting your, your life? You know, what do you need? You know, cause we are an entertainment brand. We want to be that comfort for, um, for that community, whatever community is, and specifically for the Hispanic community. And let's have that dialogue around social justice. Let's have that dialogue around COVID. Um, and as you see uh, on, the, on the Hispanic side, you'll see that evolving also 
my, our season doesn't start till later on in the year. So I'm thinking very um, intently on what that authentic message is. Because you have to think about the NFL, you know, 60%, 70% of that population that play are African Americans. They deal with the social justice issue. Um, there's a huge population of Afro Latinos that we need to consider, right? That um, I, I always have a challenge when we talk about Hispanic as a holistic, monolithic um, organization. And if you look at the faces here, we're all Latino. There's mm -hmm darker brown people, there are lighter brown people. Uh, you know, I'm, I have Native American background in me, so we are all shades. So we have to be conscious of that in our conversation because one social justice issue for an Afro-Latino is a very different one from a, you know, more Mexican, you know, indigenous person. I don't know if I answer your question. I got, I got on a soapbox there for a second. I, I love a good soapbox, and that was actually, it, it was probably the question I was most curious to hear um, from the panelists, and, and admittedly, I really wanted to hear what you had to say, so I, I'll let you go for a few more minutes. I could, but I'm going <laughs> to get to the rest of the folks. No, no, it was really, it was actually very insightful, um, which actually makes me, I'm going to jump because we, we had a um, attendee question that kind of jumps off of this one, which was, um, asking how we think that the Black Lives move Movement will cause a shift in priorities and budgets from efforts to engage with the Hispanic audience. And so I'd love, I'm, a, I'm actually gonna throw back to Gonzalo on this one if I can. Um, and again, just how do you think the Black Lives, Black Lives Matter movement will have an impact on the Hispanic audience and budgets? So I think we need to look at um, what the reality was uh, from a pure media spend perspective uh, on the black community. Um, in some degree, uh, when you think about the Hispanic community, we have the benefit of language. You do not have that benefit of language on the African-American side. Uh, and if you talk to people that are more on the technical side, they would say that whatever they do with regular general market media, as we call it, even though I don't like the general market word, uh, they basically say, well, we are over delivering towards this audience with whatever we do. Now, I think, and this is something we uh, spoke with Isaac many times, the difference between reach and engagement, the difference between putting a message and getting eyeballs, mm -hmm. uh, between that and connecting with the hearts and minds of the consumers. So number one, the level of spend towards the African-American community or the black community has been always below what this community represents. It's the same case with Hispanic, but it, it's even much stronger uh, the, the gap with the African-American community. So if the whole Black Lives Matter situation, uh, the, the social justice that Javier referred to is gonna help having a more dedicated and relevant communication with the audience, that's absolutely welcome. And that should not affect what advertisers do with the Hispanic community. Uh, there are many things in common uh, with, from both communities, but the reality is that marketers need to understand that they need to engage audiences in a relevant way. And that is only possible if you talk to them in the way they want to be spoken in the right places with the right message. And one is not gonna replace the other one. So I understand that we all have limited budgets, but you need to spend the money where the business is. That's quite simple. If the business is the black community, let's go there. If the business is the Hispanic community, let's go there. If the business is somebody else, let's go there. But I think that we need to be clear that we are here because there's a business behind. We're not doing this for charity. Nobody is doing this for charity. So if we forgot about the black community, well, it's time for us to look again and do the right thing. I, um, I agree. Um, <laughs> Danani, I see you nodding, I saw you nodding quite a bit while Gonzalo was speaking and I found myself nodding as well. Uh, would you like to add a little? 
Yeah, I, I am. I agree with everything both Javier and Gonzalo said. And I think the only thing I would add is that we have moved from being a one-way communication a long time ago. So we, as as market leaders, like you mentioned early, we need to be able to provide um, our Black community to tell their own stories. You know, um, so it is important to invest not only you know in advertising but also in how we're communicating to those consumers. Uh, are we? If, and if we need to. Um, to invest a little bit more, then let's do it because that's that's the right thing to do. But also, if as brand, it's also the purpose. It's purpose marketing. Like I, I've been thinking more and more that yes, it's it's multicultural marketing, but we're doing something with a purpose, and and it's important for us to be able to be part of the community as I mentioned early, but also be genuine and authentic. And and there's a moment in life that is historical. It doesn't happen every year. We're living in a historical moment. And if we remain silent, if we do nothing, um, it will be detrimental not only to the brand, but to our business as well. So I'm just aligned with everything Gonzalo said and, and as well Javier. And Javier, thank you because I'm always saying that nobody talks about Afro Latinos. I'm Afro Latina. So I'm always like, I'm here. So thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um. I'm going to pivot a little bit to the Hispanic consumer driving growth. Um, and I hinted at this in, in my opening insights, which is that companies are still not spending enough in this market um, and that there are significant opportunities for marketers to get significant ROI um, from their investments. And we also know that the Hispanic consumer is driving business growth exponentially. Um, and, I, and I want to lean into you, Isak, on this one for everyone um, who hasn't met Isak. He's at Alma. And Alma has played a crucial role in the execution of ideas around Primeo's billboards um, with State Farm, McDonald's, and Sprint. Um, and it's also partnered with the World Cup. They have leaned into properties um, like Lavos. And so, I, first of all, thank you very much, Isak, for, for your partnership um, and supporting. But I would love to hear you talk a little bit about the challenges um, that you are now facing, how you've overcome those challenges. You could clearly have had a lot of success and, and about companies that are still not spending enough. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. First of all, well, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the Ad Club for the invitation and hello to my fellow uh, panelists, friends, all of them. I'm glad to see that. Um, I, I think that uh, in, in this case, we are blessed to have amazing clients, Gary, uh, to be very honest with you, and visionary clients and clients that we've been partnering a lot over the years, some of them decades, uh, to get where we are. Um, I think the challenges, they're still there. Uh, and if I can name some of them, I think that there are still a lot of uh, misconceived ideas. There are still a lot of uh, uneducated um, uh, data and information out there. And some of the statistics that you share are earlier in this, uh, in this session were extremely important. But I think that, you know, there is also the elephant in the room that we have to, to, to acknowledge. Time has come to say out loud that total market, it's over. The idea that one size fits all, that one message is going to reach all the segments and sub-segments culturally, ethnically, wherever you divide, slice and dice the market is completely wrong. It has been wrong from a business standpoint for the past three to five years because we have more data than ever. I'm going to repeat this. We have more data than ever in terms of marketing effectiveness and ROI of multicultural marketing. When I came to the US from Latin America, from South America 21 years ago, it was kind of a wishful thinking. We see the demographics. It seems the right thing to do, but there was no data to back it up. Now we have the data. And if you don't like the Telemundo data, NBC Telemundo, I like, Harry. you go to Nielsen. You don't like the Nielsen data, go to Cantor. You don't like the Cantor data, go to the ANA AIM, even the advertisers. It, this is not coming from the advertising agencies or the media agencies. Every single respectful data source is, conf is confirming that culture matters. And if you do the right thing, you're going to have a higher ROI than you have by either translating messages or not doing anything. So, so um, the time has come from a business standpoint to say the total market is over. But now, connecting the dots with what uh, Gonzalo uh, D and Javier mentioned, it's almost morally imperative to say that one size fits all also put 
uh, uh, silence uh, uh, minority groups. And these minority groups not only have a voice, they have a look, they have their own stories and their whole angles of uh, showing themselves in the marketplace in the society. So I think that one of the interesting things about this lower coaster that Gonzalo mentioned that's between COVID and uh, the social justice debate is that is accelerating a lot of movements. And one of the things that's been accelerated is the death of total market. Can, can I jump in there for a quick second? Yeah, please do. Because Isaac and I had this debate when, 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 when I was on the brand side, I've been always on the brand side. So I was at Verizon, um, Pepsi, Microsoft. Um, I think, and I'm going to be a little controversial here. So I, I agree with everything you said, Isaac, but the challenge is not this idea of total market, right? I think general, general market marketers went in and took that and went and made it like vanilla for everybody. So I agree with you there. We probably needed to educate them on really what it is about having depth in your planning, you know, actual depth. And we never did that because everybody's just trying to move on. But I do think that there is a challenge with, we have to challenge brand, brand marketers to diversify their staff. Mm -hmm. We have to challenge organizations to stop with you know institutional racism that's happening that they don't see it because they're just moving quick and i love my white people you know i love my white people but you know they're moving so fast and they care about their initiatives and they forget about the other initiatives you know data supports whatever you want it to support and you can prioritize that data ever you want. I have data saying your business for the next 20 years has to grow with Hispanic. Why am I still getting 5%? Mm -hmm. Why? Because I care about this initiative because it's hot and it's sexy, you know? And there is, and the, the, the power of these folks that are running these organizations and they're predominantly white will not push that agenda you know i agree i agree, and, and, I agree. And nobody's really having that conversation yeah and, and I, I, I see margie's head nodding quite a bit we haven't gotten to hear from margie yet she's the multicultural lead at nestle for those of you who haven't met her but i'd love to hear you look like you thank you gary thanks for having me guys and both good afternoon and good morning for the ones that are on the west coast like me but um I wanted to, to kind of go to what you're saying, Javier, because I think I agree with you in terms of like, sometimes you don't have the power to try to get everyone involved into multicultural, but I think the numbers speak to itself. And the challenge is sometimes many times, in my case, what I have seen is that people are not opening the numbers, right? Like you are looking sometimes at a market share at a total level, but suddenly when you see where your growth is coming from, I think that's the key question and where it's going to come exactly what you were saying, Javier, in the next couple of years, that's where we can go back and challenge the investments. And that's where like sometimes still, um, some of the brand teams are not as familiar and then it takes them a little bit longer to try to say okay if i invested here they want to see sometimes a return in one year and they need to understand you haven't talked to these communities for a long time so how do you expect to just have it in a year but it's the right step of just first opening the numbers and let the business case talk by itself and i agree with Isaac. like 20 years ago we don't have it um today we have it and across all multicultural groups. So I think that the first point is convincing your leadership team to invest in those numbers, to get in the clarity. And that's what I love about like the uh, media companies that help us and build those business cases with some of the access information when you don't have it, just to just ask the question, where your goal is coming from and what is going to come in the next couple of years? So that then you can, in fact, if I can say based and with a business case, go and try to fight for those numbers. I'm curious, and based on what you're saying, how many, and if nobody raises their hand, I'm gonna feel really bad, but how many of you on this panel have been asked to prove it, as I spoke to, in a way that you think that the general, or any general market opportunity uh, would not be asked in the same way to prove it? That's my point. I've been doing it, I've been doing it 15 years, proving it every year, and I still yeah. get, you know, like, I'm, I'm tired of it. Like, you know, I'm done with it. Like, st stop asking the question. I don't see that same 
a question when a young 20 something marketer has a great idea and cause it's cool and hot and my little kid knows about it. I'm gonna throw three times the amount because I don't feel comfortable with a culture conversation. That's what I'm talking about. And bi like business plans, all that stuff, like, dude, I, I mean, I've gone through it and it, it, you know. But I think even if you prove it, like at least I have been very fortunate. Like it, it took me a while, but like, I think we're in a very good path in Asli and Gonzalo has been uh, with me joining that conversation many times when we had it to kind of build the business case. But after you prove it, I think the point is like having one brand that goes deep does it and then all the other brands want to follow when you see the growth drivers right and it's not and in nestle as you know we have like very like strong heritage brands like nescafe or maggie or la lechera that their core consumer was hispanic so that makes it easier but we had like the largest opportunity was coming also from american brands so things like where coffee made or frozen food and it only for hispanic for also other multicultural groups but the interesting thing was like going out and taking the risk and then proving it. And then I think after you have that case, the interesting thing is now it's organic. Now even your young marketers are coming and saying, how do I do this? Because I agree with the other part that you were saying, it's about diversity also in the teams that are working on, right? Like, because then they understand and they take it further. So I think it's not just one, it's a business case opportunity, but also is making sure that you have the right diversity in your teams so that then it becomes a richer conversation. No, yeah. it's not just about how can I defend marketing dollars, but it's more, this is the new reality. This is what you need to look at. Yep. Can you share a little bit more? You got me thinking, like, I, I believe Nestle has approximately 16 brands that are active on Telemundo um, right now. And so can you share a little bit about how one brand has driven the behavior and you've been able to use that to drive, you know, brand two, three, and four? Exactly. And I will say that's how, so first of all, we were fortunate because we had the Latino heritage brands. So if I can say I have been in this market for 15 years. So that's where we started with the Nescafés and Las Lecheras and Nidos of the World that were already at the core. But then um, when you start being able to buy data and open data, I, I remember back in the days that we only had like panel information and they were like, panel is not enough. And then suddenly things like Nielsen Target Track and things that you can open up sales, open up you start running the numbers. And we saw that, for example, Coffee Maid had a tremendous opportunity. And the interesting thing is like, if you think about it, Latin America is cafe con leche. Not exactly you drink like coffee with French vanilla sitting in Mexico. Today you don't after Starbucks, but like I'm talking 15 years ago, you didn't, right? Like it's not something that comes nostalgic to them. But then they started investing. They launched the brand as if it was a new consumer. What was a coffee made? What was a creamer for coffee? How they did it, then maintain it. And it has been a tremendous case of success. Today, coffee made has more penetration in the Hispanic market than in the general market, being a traditional American category. So for me, that's example is when you maintain consistent investment. And to your point, Javier, beyond the 5%, right? Like this brand was investing 10%. 12, depending on what was happening, and also having dedicated engagement. I will say it was not just the transcreating a message, sometimes it was dedicated engagement to try to first educate consumers because you are launching them into your categories. Many times the, um, they haven't been exposed to these products. After you do that, then it was easier to turn around and suddenly the frozen portfolio saying, how is Coffee Mate doing that? How are they achieving this type of double digit growth? I want to do the same. Okay, that's the start. And I think everything starts with insights, not, right? Like foundational research, your numbers, what is happening in your category, what is happening in your penetration. And from there, working with all your partners, your agencies, your media agencies, the media partners, and really building a case to try to maintain your brands. So, Kerry, uh, I'd like to jump in. I don't know if you want to, to uh, throw another question, but um, I think that uh, you said a word uh, when we first started, which is transformation. Um, and I think, uh, you know, Javier, you mentioned social justice. I would say social injustice. Um, and I think that that social injustice that came so clear and in front of everybody's faces uh, two weeks ago with what happened to George Floyd, is really basically telling everyone out there that we need to change the way we work. I get it. I'm also tired of making the case. I, we've been making the case. It was probably one of our best decisions three, five years ago when we shifted from 
the importance of the Hispanic consumer from a demographic and size opportunity to the importance of the Hispanic consumer as a consumer and as a business uh, um, opportunity. Uh, as someone mentioned before, that never happened in the general market. A client that has money to spend in advertising spends it in advertising. They don't need somebody to come and prove that that is right. They may have some kind of you know, metrics behind, but we have been making the case forever. When you have that 40% of the population is not white, there's nothing we need to demonstrate. And when you have the social injustice happening in the US, it's time for us to transform the way we work and update it to the reality of the world and the US today, period. The rest is just you know semantics. It doesn't make any difference. If we don't transform the way we work and we don't transform, transform the way we think and we execute the things we should, then we're gonna be doing the same thing over and over and we're gonna have the same conversation in 10 years from now. And we have to challenge people in that. Absolutely. Okay. May, may I add something, guys? I mean, I know that um, <clears throat> we're telling all that we've been here for a while and, and I get it. I mean, maybe not 15, I've been here for eight years, but this is not the time to be tired. Honestly, this is the time to be loud. So I know that we're tired. I know that it's frustrating. I mean, I get frustrated on a daily basis when Carrie asks, no, raise your hands if you haven't. We all been there. Um, we all manage large portfolio. But I think that, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, what we're experiencing now, we had not experienced in the last 10 years. And I don't know how many of you can tell me that what is going right now, we are in the largest pandemic. We have a, a huge amount of people unemployed right now. And then we also have a social injustice going on. It is a trifecta effect that is happening right now within our multicultural consumer. And if we, who are considered, I don't know, subject matter experts in the area, possibly in our industry, are not taking this time as an opportunity to educate, to go back to it. Yes, if we're frustrated, let's call each other and bend with each other, but let's go back again strong because right now our leaders have um, the right ears, and I hope I'm saying that okay in English. I'm trying to translate from, from <laughs> Spanish to English right now. Their ears and hearts are ripe right now. This is the time for us to go yeah. and yeah, ask for investment and show up. Yeah, so that's all I was going to say. I'm tired as well. <laughs> yeah, but let me let me just. I'm being controversial, and I'm a little exhausted, so I'm not fully tired. But I'm just trying to advocate for people to have the conversation. So I'm I'm here with you. Like I'm like, look, if it's time, let's let's all do it because. People are listening and people are open for it. So this is the time for us to really make change and have people have to, to Gonzalo, transformational change, right? Because it's not just about the business case. It's more about all those aspects that we need to kind of really talk about. And, and if I may, there's uh, Gonzalo mentioned that his switch from demographics to the business, which is uh, the right approach. But if I, if I may go so for a second, go back to demographics, it is, amazing to see how today 2020 there are still companies debating whether or not being in the multicultural space right so let's remind i know this panel knows but let's remind one thing today the majority of u.s a population under 17 years old it's already minority majority today the majority of the 17 years old is already a minority majority that means that if you are an advertiser that's getting to the generation z and you're not really tapping into multicultural consumer, you're not in the marketplace. You're not in the marketplace. You, you are pretending you are the marketplace, but you're not. And the demographics, they are not going to change in the next five, 10, 15, 20 years. The train has already departure. America is already on the path of minority majority at one point in between 2004 to 2054, the whole population, okay? So, so this is regardless of political party, who is in the Supreme Court, who is in Congress. This is the power of demographics. So I think that, you know, the biggest discussion is, are you gonna be an active player as a marketer in this, in this transformation, or are you gonna be a passive? And sometimes it's okay to say, you know what, I'm gonna be out waiting to see what's gonna happen. 
but there is a risk associated with, associated with that. And that's the discussion that I actually like to have with my clients and prospects, because when you have a demographic transformation as deep as this one, that I don't think it happened in any other country in the world, what's gonna have is a seismic change on competitive situation. Brands that are leaders today and comfortably leading today, they may lose market share in the future. So number two, number three brands, they have an opportunity to leapfrog and become leaders in the marketplace through the demographic transformation. And these brands, they are fully aware of that, some of them. So this is not about keeping, maintaining, playing safe. It's a seismic transformation that's happening. So this is an amazing opportunity for brands that may not have the budgets to actually get in an emotional connection and lead in sales and market share. And this is a transformation that's happening in every single category. And I think that's the exciting thing. This is not about simple demographic shifts. This is about changes in marketplace positioning in the whole country in several industries. I think um, you bring up... <laughs> Uh, uh, you make me pause in that. I think um, that this time of transformation is, again, like nothing we've ever seen. I think that many marketers are reducing their spend and their budgets, and that is the exact time to be having this conversation about targeting multicultural audiences. Your budgets have been cut in half. Great. You know what you should do? You should be doing something different. You should be talking to multicultural, the multicultural audiences that you aren't speaking to. If you want your money to truly work harder for you, I think mm -hmm. that the, uh, the, the conversation has been opened up in a much deeper way than it ever has been before mm -hmm. um, for very tragic reasons. But that conversation has been open and, and I would say that I think it's all of our responsibility to keep the momentum of the conversation about how important diversity and inclusion is and everything we do, not only in what's in front of the camera, but the, who's behind that camera. You know, the, and, and it is, you know, I, I listened to another panel recently and, and they said, you know, it's, it's great. It was all black leaders in our business on this panel and one of them said, it's great that we have this momentum and this, and this energy right now, but we need this same energy one week from now. We need this exact same energy one month from now, and we need this exact same energy one year from now. And I think that's where, you know, we all have to, again, it goes back to that doing it together transformation. The only way this real transformation is going to happen is if we all do it together. And if we all keep the momentum that, is, that we currently have going and keep this conversation going. Um, Gary, if I can add to that point, it, that's exactly it. So I will go with like what Dee said, like today, the hearts and minds are open, open to hear. So it's the right moment to come with the data. Like, even though I think we have done a good job in Nestle, it has opened the conversation again to go back and check one, what was happening with like our workforce and what was the, the amount of diversity that we have. And it has also opened the conversation again, what is the market shares that we have, not only with Hispanic, but also with African-American and what is happening. So if you use this moment to buy, if I can say time to have like the right facts around the, the business, I think you're in a critical moment that can pivot where your company is going and exactly to exact point, where are you investing and how you can invest differently, even though we know that sometimes we're like super concerned, it's going to be a recession time, how do we do it right? But just having the right number and the right attitude and bringing those things to the forefront, I think this is the moment to, to show it. This and, is the and, moment and when hearts are open. And if I may, just 30 seconds, you're gonna to have to do that by changing your process and your business model. You cannot do what Margie just said by managing your agencies the same way, managing your resources the same way, budget allocation the same way. You're gonna to have to change all the parameters of your business as a CMO, as a, as a brand. Because saying this and behaving through the same planning process, the same allocation, the same role that a quote unquote general market agency has vis-a-vis -a, -vis a multicultural agency, is not going to help. You're going to have to transform the whole process. So we just hit one o'clock and I was told we can go five minutes over because we started five minutes late, but I understand that may not be possible for everyone. You know, the, the, the last wrap up question was, uh, what does the future look like to you? I actually want to give each of you an option to say what you would like the future to look like. Take your pick. What does the future look like to you or what would you like the future to look like based on the conversation that we were having? I think the second was appropriate to throw out to the group as well. Um, I'm going to go round robin on this one. I'll stop start top right, Gonzalo. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's funny you're saying how I like it to be or how it will be. Uh, I would say I'd rather go with I like it to be because I don't know if it will be, but uh, I've been talking about this for quite a while. Uh, what I hope is that uh, everyone that is in any kind of communication business, being a marketer, being a media partner, being an agency, being a client, uh, understands that multicultural should be something organic, something that happens naturally. It's being discussed as part of the overall strategy. It's something that it's part of everything from the very, very first start and it flows again organically through the whole thing because it's the right thing to do from both a business and a social perspective. Javier, your next, you my next box. Okay, um, I would love to see more diverse um, folks in leadership positions across organizations, not only the CM, the CMOs across the organization. I want to see more Latino women. Latino men, you know, every every shade up there really kind of pushing diversity. Um, I want to also make sure that creative evolves also. We didn't really talk about creative, like, and, and really, you know, put center stage, you know, brands and kind of those cultural narratives that are not being told. You know, there's so many of them and they're not being told and not just to Latino consumers or African-American to the world. You know, we all need to see this because that's what's gonna cause change, right? Like the social justice message is not only for the African-American consumer, it's for middle America. So we need to kind of show that because we can actually break, you know, the challenges we have as our history through marketing. Marketing is a power, is there's a power to it and, and let's leverage that power. For so, social change. Margie? So I, I think I, I get you can just build on what they are saying. I totally I believe that marketing is a force for good. And the more that we can be inclusive in everything that we're doing, I think the best um, country that we can create. I think um, multicultural audiences deserve that kind of opportunity to showcase what are the numbers, what are the growth, how can we make them like part of our business in, in a way that we're really driving through all of them, not just in a way that is, as Gonzalo said, it's just reach. No, the reality is how we engage with them, how we connect with their hearts and how we understand their stories and showcase them. I think that's our opportunity. That's the opportunity for where we are right now and that we need to take it and move it forward. Nene? Yeah, I think I second like everybody, what everybody else said. I just want to go back to what you said earlier, Carrie, when we have a social responsibility with the storytelling. And I know Javier mentioned that as well. I totally believe that we can break down the stereotypes and bring more positive. And I think that's what I would like to see. I would like to see breaking us as marketers, pushing our agencies and creative to we break down those stereotypes so that we can bring more positive stories that are being told by multicultural consumer and that are totally rele culturally relevant to that consumer as well. Deepak, you get to bring us home. Thank you. Uh, great to see you guys. Um, as a country, I deem that in the future, we're going to be a country that actually values multiculturalism, diversity, bilingualism. These things make the, count they make the country stronger, not weaker. For our industry, I hope that we can see that investments are going to be based on future growth, not based on past decisions. So we're going to have to break away from past to the, to the future. I hope that we can be surrounded by experts when we make these decisions. And, and, and I truly, truly hope that uh, we continue this dialogue because th there's momentum going on and I'm very optimistic about it. So thank you, Ed Club. Thank you, everybody. So I think that is our five extra minutes. I wanna thank all of the panelists so much for joining me and for teaching me. What I love about what I do is that I get to learn on a daily basis. Um, I share your commitment and enthusiasm. It is not lost on me, my personal lack of diversity on this panel, but I share wholeheartedly the commitment, passion, um, 
to, to having audiences um, reflected in, in what they see on air and also with um, leadership you know, positions at my own company. I can't thank you enough for all of the honesty and um, enthusiasm that everyone brought to this discussion today. And I look forward to more, more conversations and um, continuing to move forward it forward together. Thank you, and so thank you everyone. On behalf of the Ad Club, I would just like to thank you all for your incredibly honest perspective. Um, our hearts and minds have been opened like never before. Um, I think that you have the commitment from the Advertising Club that this conversation will continue. To, we don't intend to um, stop talking or to be silent. Again, Kerry and, and the entire panel, thank you so much for your time today. Everybody that tuned in, um, we'll be sending a wrap up. Um, there's a survey after that will come up immediately if you can help us um, by completing that. And then also we'll be sharing this conversation. So please forward this to people that you know who would get a lot out of it. And again, incredible panel. We couldn't be more thankful for your perspective. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.